Hello YouTube, Metal Trooper 62 here once again, and here we have another part for my AR build. So this part, what we have here, is the barrel. And um, first off, let me do this part. This is where I got the barrel from. Ballistic Advantage LLC. It's a 16 inch, 5.56 government profile, mid length barrel, mid length gas system, uh, modern series. And I'm going to go into a little bit more details on this barrel here in a little bit. But it was 165 shipping, 1431, grand total, 17931. And there was a few um, selling points why I chose this barrel. But uh, it's a great company. And actually, um, the Daily Shooter had gotten his barrel from Ballistic Advantage. And, and uh, that, that was another selling point. So thank you to the Daily Shooter for doing that video on this. And giving me a heads up um, for my AR build, but uh, but again, yeah, he did his video on his AR build, and this is where he got his barrel. And uh, thanks again, the Daily Shooter. Okay, so first off, um, this barrel was packed very, very, very well. I've ordered barrels before for my AKs and. They weren't shipped quite this nice. But, I mean, they still got here and everything fine. No problems. But, it was packaged, like I said, it was packaged real well. Um, packed real well with paper and everything. But, it comes in this plastic thing with this, um, this netting, plastic netting. I've seen this on other things before in that but uh let me open this up because i only got one hand on the barrel and one hand on the camera so hang on a second okay got that open very very nice barrel Sure, you can't see that. There's the lighting on my camera, my phone. But looks awesome. So, and I got this like uh, I've never seen this before, but I'm not really going to go into this. But it's a limitation of liability. Basically, it's a uh, a letter saying that you know they're not responsible if you're an idiot with your gun and hurt yourself or others so i mean this is common sense stuff and it's it's kind of sad that people have to uh you know give these disclosure because of idiots out there that um just get stupid with guns and that i mean it's all about safety when this you know comes to a firearm but uh but yeah it was uh like I said, I'm not real, never really seen one of these before, but I can understand with the way people are so happy. But anyway, here's here's some of the um, details on the barrel. It's a 16 inch. It's made out of 4150 chrome molly vanadium. Uh, the profile is government. The finish is a QPQ corrosion resistant, and I'm going to go into a little bit more details on that here also. Gas system, mid-length. Gas block journals, 0 0.750, which is 3 quarters of an inch. Twist rate, 1 to 7, and I'll go into a little bit more detail why I chose that barrel. Muzzle, half inch to 28 threads. And the weight is 28 ounces. 
Okay, so first off on the twist rate. This was one thing I had mentioned in my, my last video on some parts that I had received. Um, I was kind of having a tough decision on what twist I wanted to go with. And mind you, this what I have wrote down here is just an average of the multiple videos I found. And um, this is basically what I wrote down. So, I mean, this isn't, you know, th this right here is not set in stone. Like I said, this is an average of all the videos I've seen that people did on, on the twist rate. So one in seven uh, barrel twist length, and the twist rate twist rate is one in seven means the bullet or projectile will make one one continuous revolution in seven inches of the barrel. So and that just goes on, so on. You know, one in seven, one in eight, one in nine, and twelve. Um, these are some of the more common. Uh, twist rates out there. I'm sure there might be other ones in that, but these are just the ones that I wrote down. So, one and seven, and these are the uh, the projectile or the bullet grain which works best in these. One and seven is a 62 grain to a 75 grain. One and eight twist uh, works best with a 48 grain to a 75 grain. One in nine twist works best in a 40 grain to a 75 grain. And the one in 12, uh, 40 grain to a 55 grain. Now, um, obviously, you know, if, if you're wanting to shoot a, a wider range of bullet weights, you know, then the one in eight, one in eight and one in nine twist uh, would you know, theoretically be the best one for you in that. But from what I've found, and I've even actually got a couple buddies that have ARs, and I talked to them, and um, they said that some of these numbers, it really depends. Um, you know, it, it can kind of fluctuate and everything about your accuracy and everything. And a lot of times the accuracy comes down to the shooter, too. That's, that's a big factor. But uh, I chose the 1 in 7 because from the videos that I've seen, the 1 in 7, um, let me back up. The, the bullets that I'm planning on shooting out of my AR is just going to be the typical 55 grain and 62 grain ammunition. Um, I might get into some of the heavier weights if I, you know, when I reload, but for the most part, 60, 55 grain to 62 grain is what I'll be shooting. So, um, a few of my buddies, they have this one in seven twist, and they said they shot the 55 grain out of it early accurate with shooting 250 yards and still getting two to three inch MOA at 250 yards and that's that's pretty good I'm not looking for you know attack driver or anything I want something that you know if I need it for defense that I can hit center mass you know two or three inches is is fine for me but uh that's why I went with one in the seven because I the the material that they use and everything, I could not find this in a 1 and 9 twist. So that's why I went with 1 and a 7. So that's just a little bit about that. Okay, now on to the QPQ corrosion resistance part. QPQ is basically quench, polish, quench. This... Focus, thank you. Um... This is a special specialized type of nitrocarburizing case hardening that increases corrosion resistance. Um, it's it's got some trade names known as tough dried, tenifer, or melanite. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of melanite. Uh, that was one of the big selling points for me on this barrel. Was was this. Uh, material and process that they used. 
Um, basically, there's three steps involved. First one is the nitrocarburize, then you quench, polish, and then the post oxide, and then quench. So that's what gives this barrel um, some very, very, very good corrosion resistance. And I've most of my AK builds, I use the uh, you know the original barrels, which are uh, chrome line, cold hammer forged barrels, and I had gotten a AK parts kit. Well, I was looking for a barrel, and I did a lot of research, and I was finding that the black nitride, which is basically about the same thing, um, had the reviews on it were were awesome. So I went with that barrel, and I'm in the process of of building that firearm also but uh they said it was a you know a little bit more accurate than chrome line i don't know why my camera's not working but uh but anyway that's that was my big selling point for for this barrel was the uh ppq corrosion resistance process and like i said this is got the mid-length gas system. It's got the, the gas port drilled and everything. And it's got the M4 um, feed ramps and barrel extension on it and everything. So I'm getting close to having all my parts. I was supposed to have more parts in today also besides this one. And the post office jacked me around once again saying, hey, your package is going to be here on the 29th. Did it show up? Hell no, it didn't show up. So, after cussing a lot and and uh, getting upset about it, which doesn't do nothing, um, hopefully it'll be here tomorrow. But I made a trade with somebody, and I will be getting my fixed A2 front sight uh, slash gas block. Um, my rear sight. And I can't remember. I think that might be it. But now pretty much all I'm lacking is my muzzle brake, which I am going to go with a crap. I can't think of it now. Oh, well. It's no big. I got it wrote down somewhere. But I'm basically going with a uh, flash hider slash brake. And uh, they run about... $28, $35, something like that. Damn camera focus. But anyway, uh, this video has gotten pretty damn long. It's over 13 minutes. But anyway, just wanted to touch bases with y'all about my AR build. It's getting close, folks. Getting really close, and I'm getting excited. Getting really excited about this. But uh, this is actually the... The most expensive part on my AR build. And when I get everything that I'm going to figure up the total price and everything. Which, you know, like some of the parts I traded for. So I can't really guess about how much I got. You know, and then plus I won uh, my Polymer 80 lower receiver from the real Cobra burnout. So, I mean, that was, you know, that didn't give me. You know, I didn't have no money invested in that, so. So it should be a fairly inexpensive build. And, uh, I guess that's about it. If you want, go check out Ballistic Advantage. I'm not sure of the website. I think it's BallisticAdvantage.com um, or something like that. I'll try to post that in the, in the uh, description below when I upload this. And... I guess that's about it. So, thanks again to the Daily Shooter for turning me on to Ballistic Advantage in this barrel. I'm sure I'm going to be really, really happy with it. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe only if you want to. And until then, y'all have a good one. See ya.